Manny, what are you doing up, man? Man, Dad, I couldn't sleep. The people upstairs woke me up again. Yeah, me too. Man, they sure are busy ever since they got back from their honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, well, they're probably uh, assembling furniture. Yeah. Lots and lots of furniture. <laughs> Look, Manny, we both know we're not talking about furniture. Now, what they're doing upstairs is, is very beautiful, it's very natural, and it's very loud. Man, Dad, when is this gonna end? I need some sleep. Well, if they're like most married couples, they'll get over it in six months to a year. Hi. Uh, sorry to bother you. Huh? Uh, I live upstairs. My wife and I got a bunch of furniture as wedding gifts, and I was wondering if I could borrow an Allen wrench. <laughs> Really putting together furniture? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uncle Carl, Uncle Carl, you were never gonna believe what just happened. Sorry, we're late. Sorry. Sorry, it's not gonna bring back my meatloaf. <laughs> It's the coolest thing. I volunteer to make you guys my special meatloaf and you can't even pick up the phone. <laughs> Man, Dad took out a mugger. What? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're fine. Go ahead, Dad. Tell him what happened. <sighs> okay, see. We were on our way out of Burger Giant on Clark, and this guy came at us with a knife and wanted our money. Dad gave him a roundhouse kick to the jaw. Man, it was like watching Van Damme. <laughs> wow, I don't believe it. What were you doing at Burger Giant when I was here cooking you a meatloaf? <laughs> You should have seen it. Dad held him down to the police came. His nose bled everywhere. I'm gonna call Weissman and tell him about this. His dad's never beaten up anybody. But well, man, you're acting pretty cool about this. I would think you'd be more shook up. Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine. I mean, yeah, I was scared when it happened, you know, but I just reacted. You know, and the last thing I wanted Maddie to see was that I was afraid. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben, you know, if I had been there, I, I would have had your back. You know that, right? <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I know that, I know. And I wouldn't have been wearing a cow on my hand either, you know. Yeah, well, yeah, but sometimes they can be effective, especially if you're attacked by a hot casserole. Man, I've always wondered what it would feel like to be dishing out some street justice. Wow. Oh, now that would be a defining moment. Oh, when am I going to have my moment, Ben? When, Ben, when? Well, next time a guy pulls a knife on me, I'll tell him, thanks, I've already had my moment, but my brother Carl is looking for one. Oh. I'm gonna go check on Maddie, make sure he's all right. Oh. Yeah, you hear that, White? Yeah, man, that's exactly what it sounded like, except it was the guy's head. Huh. Yeah, I gotta go, man. See you later. Pretty wild night, huh? Oh, yeah, man. How you doing? You all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah, I'm a little hungry, though. That guy landed on my curly fries. You know, just because of what happened tonight, I don't want you thinking you can't feel safe anymore. What, Dad? Are you kidding? The way you took that guy out? Bit, bam, bop, bop, zoom. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess I am responsible for the bap and the bip, but I can't take any credit for the boom. That was the sound of him landing on your curly fries. <laughs> you know, I'd never let anything happen to you. All right. Don't y'all worry. I think my meatloaf is gonna be okay. Luckily, I basted it with prune juice. Sorry, Maddie. Can't do anything to protect you from this. So what do you think, Alex? Huh? Wanna show Maddie's class how a book is published right from the outline? To the hardback. That's great. You know, I used to love career days. Huh? Pack your lunch, get on the bus, go to a big office and watch people work. Uh, and look. You fulfilled your dream. Not many men can say that, Ben. Yeah. Oh, before I forget, I want to give you something. Just in case you ever get mugged again, I think this baby's going to come in handy. Mm -hmm. Listen, Alex, I don't know what Mr. Sulu told you at the Star Trek convention, but these phases don't really work. Starfleet wishes they had these. This is the latest in stun gun technology from the Philippines. Mm. Is it legal? Of course it's legal mm. in the Philippines. <laughs> Be careful. Make sure it's off before you put it back in your pocket. Thank you, Alex, but no thank you. I'm not going to let one little incident change my life. As far as I'm concerned, it's over. I just want to forget about it. Mr. Stevenson? Mrs. Holberson. Alex, this is Mrs. Holberson. 
Maddie's civic teacher? Mrs. Hoberson from Madison Junior High School? I was in your class, you remember me? Alex Butler, cute little kid in bangs and braces, eight paste. 18,000 kids have passed through my classroom in the last 30 years. Yeah, I remember you. Well, I couldn't forget you because you were one of the best teachers I ever had. Now I remember you, Alex. Alex Butlick. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. On low. Easy, low. Easy. Easy. Maddie, why don't you introduce your father to the uh, class? All right. Hey, there. Uh, this is my dad, Ben Stevenson, and this is his company, which he runs with his partner, Alex. Butler. But. No. <laughs> Uh, my dad's gonna tell us what he does here every day because I have no idea. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maddie, for that very illuminating introduction. Kids, when I was told you were coming here today, I was so excited. Your interest in books is very inspiring to me because you are America's future. Ah, a question already, Amber. Is it true you went upside the head of some thug the other night? Excuse me? Maddie told everybody at school how you kicked that guy's butt. He did, huh? Yeah! Yeah, they think you're a hero, and it's working for me, so go with it. Excuse me, Mr. Stevenson? Yeah. Did you sock him in the heart like Jackie Chan did in First Strike? <laughs> did he bleed from his ears like the bad guy in Die Hard? Yeah! Kids, 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 didn't anybody see Babe? Yeah, when those two dogs tried to kill each other, that was excellent. <laughs> Look, we are not here to talk about the other night. Come on, Dad. You always told me the first rule of publishing is know your audience, and this audience has no interest in publishing. <laughs> That's what's on the program. Now, what happened last night was not heroic. It was self-defense, and I don't think we should glorify violence as an answer to our problems. Now, from now on, the only questions I'm taking will be about books. Yes, Amber? Did you ever hit anyone with a book? <laughs> <laughs> some reason you followed me? Oh, no. Carl, he's the valet. You didn't give him the car keys. Oh, I know that. Lucky for you. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Ben. I'm sorry we didn't make reservations. Oh, please. We always have a table open for a hot local celebrity. Uh, and, you know, his brother. So when did he become a celebrity? You didn't read the morning paper? No. You were in the trip? With a picture? Nah, that's no sure, big yeah. deal, Carl. Uh, it was a reporter at the police station, and the mayor just wanted a picture with me. Right Is that a key to the city? Well, he, he happened to have one on him. Come <laughs> on, Carl. You had your picture in the trip once. Oh, don't patronize me, Ben. So did 999,000 other men at the Million Man March. <laughs> Angry vigilante takes justice into his own hands. We are so proud of our little vigilante. Nicole, I did what I had to do. That's all. I'm no vigilante. I'm a peaceful man. Last time I got into a fight was over Diane Ferber in the third grade. And Patricia Bonella beat the crap out of me. Come on now, Ben. You have every reason to be proud. You actually did what most people only dream of doing but never actually get the opportunity. Now, isn't that right, Carl? You're right. You know, not everybody was able to stand the pressure of the Million Man March. Man next to me whined and complained the whole damn time. Finally, I said, Daddy, I should have left you at home. You know, and I don't like people treating me differently because of one lousy moment in my life. You know, I am no hero. I don't want any special treatment. Well, you're, you're absolutely right, Ben. We shouldn't glorify violence in our civilization. No, it is, it's a horrible thing that happened. Yeah. And I really don't like the way people are twisting this thing. I mean, even Maddie's taking it the wrong way. All he keeps talking about is, is, is wanting to kick butt like his old man. If I wasn't so opposed to violence, I'd kick his little butt for calling me an old man. <laughs> so what are you going to do? Well, I want to sign him up for Taekwondo. I think it'll be good for him. Hopefully he'll learn that real power comes from control and and self restraint like I did. <laughs> what? Is there something you want to talk to us about? Nah, it's no big deal. It's just a little frustrated with the crackers. That's all. Yeah, well, they are troublemakers, Ben, and the entire food industry knows it, too. Yeah. <laughs> ben Stevens. Yes, that would be me. This is for you. What's this? It's a summons. You're being sued, Ben. By whom? By the guy who mugged you. What? What? It's been a pleasure serving you. You know, this day couldn't get any worse.
Carl, this is insane, man. I mean, what kind of society do we live in where a guy could sue you because he didn't successfully rob you? I'm telling you, man, they're laughing at us in Sweden. <laughs> hey, man, I just talked to a friend down at the courthouse about your assailant. Francis Shelton. Yeah. I can't believe he's suing you for excessive use of force. I can't believe he's asking for future lost wages plus damages. I can't believe you were mugged by a guy named Francis. <laughs> he's suing me for lost wages. Mm -hmm. The guy's a mugger. How do you calculate something like that? Uh, two purses a day, a couple of wallets times 52 weeks? <laughs> Minus expenses. I mean, you gotta have a weapon, right? <laughs> and those stockings for your face? Please. You wear them once, they run. <laughs> Well, actually, he says he's a handyman, and that the beating you gave him rendered him unable to pursue his passion for drywalling. Oh, well, I can certainly understand that, considering all the years he must have spent studying at the Spackling Institute of Technology. <laughs> Stevenson. Please make him stop. Maddie, knock it off. We're just having fun, Dad. Right, Sanders? Yeah, it's cool. But your dad thinks we should stop. So I gotta go. Maddie! Man, Dad, this karate stuff is so cool. I can't wait till we start Taekwondo. I mean, if I'm this good, you know. Maddie, enough! You're a lot on my mind right now. What's the matter, Dad? Actually, the guy that mugged you, Francis Shelton, is suing your father. I don't believe this. We got mugged by a guy named Francis? Don't worry, Maddie. I am going to take no prisoners. And as your father's attorney, the first thing tomorrow, I'm going down there and filing a countersuit against this guy for engaging us in a frivolous lawsuit. I'm going to have him and his attorneys in litigation for years. And you don't have to worry about my fee, Ben. That's why they invented second mortgages. Yeah, go for it, Uncle Carl. Bring this guy to his knees. Make him bleed. Make him beg for mercy. Now, hold on. Hold on. Now, this is exactly what I didn't want. Look, I am not an angry man. I'm not going to fight aggression with aggression. Carl, make this lawsuit go away as quickly as possible. The guy's got to stand trial. Let the system punish him. I'm never going to get my moment, am I? Uh, man, I don't know why you wouldn't want to rip this guy's throat out. Maddie, sit down. You know, ever since you saw me take that mugger down, you seem to think that the sum of a man is in his fist. And it's not. A man is someone who's, who's turned down at 15 job interviews, but still goes on the 16th because he has a family to support. He's someone who gets trash-talked, but he walks it off because he'd rather keep his dignity. And a real man knows that just because someone throws the first punch, he doesn't have to throw the second. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess so, Dad. All right. Wow, man, you really went through 15 job interviews? No, 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 I wasn't talking about me. Okay, Dad. No, 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 no I'm, I'm serious. I, I got the first job I ever went for. Sure, Dad. Good night. Carl, you remember? I got the first job I ever went for. Yeah, sure, Ben. Good night. <laughs> Carl, I know what a bulldog you can be in a legal situation, and I'm grateful. But I want this thing settled as quickly and smoothly as the burgers go down at Burger Giants. So you were at Burger Giants. Admit it. You want to sue me? Take a number. Oh, forget about it. Look, don't worry about today. I got you covered. But I still wish you would let me counter sue. It's a shame to look this good and not be going to court. You do look good, Carl. Yeah, don't I? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Nothing will give me more joy than to bring this attorney down a peg. Huh. Gloria Newberry. She's the most unscrupulous, unethical lawyer I've ever encountered. Now, wait a minute. Wasn't the biggest case you ever lost to Gloria Newberry? Why, well, you want to bring that up now? I'm here for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Carl. Gloria. <laughs> you were wearing that the last time we were in court together. <laughs> That's my lucky suit. <laughs> You're so clever, Gloria. You know, I caught you on court TV last night. You were playing the part of a lawyer. <laughs> my client, Francis Shelton. Frank. Hello, Francis. <laughs> I believe we already met. I'm surprised you recognized him. The last time you two met, I believe you were standing on his face. <laughs> and I've been trying to scrape the scum off of my shoes ever since. <laughs> 
Excuse us. Hey, Ben. Remember, I'm the bulldog here. You're right. Sick of huh. Miss Newberry. Let me start by saying that this is the most egregious abuse of the legal system I have ever witnessed. And that my client here, a thoughtful, compassionate, Christian man, <laughs> is willing to let this whole thing go with a handshake. Now, if we could just hurry this along, I'd like to move on to something a little more important, like laundering my delegates. <laughs> Your Saturday evenings aside, counselor. I don't think so. My client suffered severe emotional and physical distress at the hands and feet of your client. And we're not going to drop this case without satisfactory financial compensation to the tune of $50,000. Which, by the way, is one of my favorite tunes. $50,000. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Carl, what's so funny? That's my money. Uh, it's a technique, just ride with it. <laughs> $50,000, no problem. Would Mr. Shelton like a check now, or would he prefer to take it from us by knife point out in the parking lot? That way he would feel as though he earned it. Oh, he earned it. Any jury would consider that fair compensation for his injuries. That guy activated my sciatica. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware that the Muggers Union didn't have an HMO. Either your client is willing to settle, or we will be forced to take you to court. Court? Ooh, court. What would I do? How about we start by delving into your client's extensive criminal history? How about we end by conceding that that's irrelevant in a case involving excessive force? Yeah, because I'm the victim here, huh? I can't even go out anymore without looking over my shoulder. <laughs> Well, what is the world coming to when the streets aren't safe for a mugger? You're the one who was woofing down burgers in a dangerous area at night. Dangerous area? The parking lot was filled with, with BMWs and Lexi. I was so intimidated, I parked my Volvo on the street. Well, maybe that's why you got robbed. And, you know, you should think twice where you bring your kid. What did you say? Oh, nothing wrong. Not wrong. Carl, Carl. Forget it, Carl. We're not going to lower ourselves to his level. We came in on the high road and we're taking it out. And what are you feeding your kid, huh? I mean, those burgers are loaded with fat. I mean, what kind of father are you anyway? Oh, <laughs> uh, no! Let me go, Colonel! He's going to kill me! Maybe, but it'll only help our case. Will you excuse us? Hey, man, what's going through your head? All right, all right, I'm okay, I'm okay. Hey! I said I'm okay! <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, hey, man, this does not look good for our case. I don't care. I don't care, Carl. I've had enough. All this time, I've been trying to convince myself that I wasn't angry. Well, I am angry, Carl. This guy pulled a knife and threatened me and my son. What if he had killed me, Carl? What then? Maddie's already lost his mother. And what if something had happened to Maddie? What then, Carl? What would I do then? What would I do? It's okay, you know, hey, it's, it's okay. Everybody's gonna be okay. It's all good. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Gloria, we'll see you in court. What? Yeah. Fine. Looking forward to it. So am I. I can't wait to have my brother say that in front of a jury because they're going to eat it up. Just like our friends at Court TV and all the papers. And oh, you're going to be a regular little media darling. Yeah. Let's go, Ben. Carl, I don't want this. Just don't look back. Excuse me, Mr. Stevenson. Yes? <laughs> my client has graciously offered to drop this case for a... Uh, Ten thousand dollars. <laughs> All right, we'll drop the case. Hey, what about my fifty grand? Get a job, Francis. <laughs> Carl, Carl, that was one hell of a moment, man. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Maddie, what are you doing here? 
Man, I didn't want to wait till you got home to find out what happened. They dropped the case. All right. Yes. Wow. You should have seen your Uncle Carl in action. Boy, he is light on his feet. Oh, yeah, well, so is your father. He's also pretty quick on his hands and knees. <laughs> Carl. Gloria. Tennis, Tuesday. You're on. I'll bring the balls. You always do. <laughs> oh, no, it's not like that. I'm going to stop by my office and then meet you downstairs, okay? Mm hmm You okay, baby? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. Let's sit down here for a minute. Come on. You know, Mandy, it's okay to be scared. No, Dad, I'm not scared. Not really. Well... You're handling it a lot better than I did, because when I saw him today, I gotta admit, I was scared. Oh, come on, Dad. You just said that to make me feel better. Well, you want to hear something funny? The reason I didn't tell you I was scared was to make you feel better. Bad call, huh? I guess kicking butt's not the only answer, huh? Well, I know your friend Sanders is gonna be happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dad, you really were scared? Yeah. Yeah. Maddie... I wanted you to feel like I could just take care of this thing, you know, like it was no big deal. But it was a big deal. What happened the other night has affected both of us. It's going to take us a little while to work through this. But we're going to get there. Thanks, Dad. Come on, let's go home. So, Dad, when I was six, and you told me you weren't scared of the dark, yeah. were you just lying there? No, no, I wasn't afraid of that. <laughs> Okay, what about when we went to see the movie where the roaches crawled under the guy's skin? Come on, man. I told you, I dropped the juju bee under the seat and I was trying to find it. <laughs> okay, Dad. Hey, so, Dad, what are we having for dinner? Uncle Carl's meatloaf. And I'm scared, Maddie. I am really scared. <laughs> I don't care how long you sit there. Nobody's going anywhere until they eat their meatloaf. Wasting <laughs> all my time. Well, what you looking at, boy? You better put that lip back in. 